The lungs are an incredible organ in our body. They allow us to breathe, live life to the fullest, and be with the ones we love. However, people of all ages live their life with rare lung diseases. Everyday tasks can become challenging. It could be due to genetics, the environment, or lifestyle habits. One example is called Langerhans cell histiocytosis. Its prevalence is estimated at 1 to 2 in 100,000 people. Because of its rarity, most physicians lack the experience to diagnose, let alone care for patients with these conditions. It's important to learn about these diseases to help patients make healthy lifestyle choices. So the main question is, what is Langerhans cell histiocytosis? It is a rare disorder that involves Langerhans cells. These are abnormal cells that derive from bone marrow and can migrate from skin to lymph nodes. They can multiply excessively and build up in certain areas of the body, causing tumors called granulomas. These granulomas can cause pain and swelling, sometimes fracturing your arms and your legs. Langerhans cell histiocytosis can be divided into four variants. The first being unifocal, which is more commonly called unisophilic granuloma of the bone. In this form, it is a non-cancerous tumor, usually occurring in adolescents and young adults. It shows up in the skull, legs, ribs, pelvis, and the spine, and it's presented as bone pain. Next, there is multifocal unisystem, which is also known as hans schuler christian triad disease. This syndrome occurs in children aged 2 to 5 years and in some older children and adults. It is classically associated with the triad of diabetes, proptosis, and lytic bone lesions, which are usually spots of bone damage in the skull. Next, there is multifocal multisystem, which is also known as lederer syri disease. This is the most severe form of Langerhans cell histiocytosis and it affects multiple organs. It is a congenital condition occurring in children under the age of 3. They usually start to form scaly lesions on their skin, anemia, and haptosplenomegaly, which is when the liver and spleen swell up to an abnormal size. The final form, which is found in individuals with adult onset of the disorder, is a unique form called pulmonary Langerhans cell histiocytosis. It is unique in that patients are often smokers or exposed to secondhand smoke. About two-thirds of adult onset cases affects only the lungs. Some symptoms may start off very mild, such as having shortness of breath or coughing. Other common symptoms include fatigue, fever, weight loss, and chest pain. 10 to 25% of patients have one of their lungs collapse, called spontaneous pneumothorax. As the disease continues, it becomes harder to breathe even when resting. The signs and symptoms depend on where it is in the body. Some examples are flaking of the scalp, rashes throughout the body, and having lumps over bones. However, up to 15% of patients are asymptomatic, accidentally discovering the disease after radiological imaging. Some of the current diagnoses include high-resolution chest computed tomography scans, which can show air-filled spaces called cysts or scar tissue in the lungs. Breathing tests, such as a spirometer, is used to see how well your lungs are working. In some cases, lung biopsies, a surgical procedure, is used to observe your lung tissue under a microscope. An expert in the field of respirology medicine, Dr. Sai Jin Chong from Dublin, Ireland, has partnered with McMaster University to conduct research on interstitial lung diseases. Through her current work with the Firestone Institute for Respiratory Health, she has found that the main treatment of pulmonary Langerhans cell histiocytosis is smoking cessation, which leads to symptom resolution in up to one-third of patients. Corticosteroids are a class of drugs that lowers inflammation in the body. They are frequently used and appear somewhat beneficial. In some selected patients, lung transplantation may be an option, providing smoking has ceased. Unfortunately, recurrence in the transplanted lung has been found. Other treatments include supportive care, hormone replacement therapy, chemotherapy, and radiation therapy. Although the expansion of treatment options have gradually improved outcomes, treatment of the disease remains challenging, particularly in adults. Clinical trials of combined and targeted therapies are ongoing. Moving forward, we hope to build a community of students and researchers to help patients improve their quality of life, receive better healthcare services, and make well-informed decisions for their treatments. If you would like to learn more, stay tuned for upcoming research from the ASK lab at McMaster University.